Okay, so let's have a look at some optimization problems, which is kind of to do with modeling as well. And we'll think about how we can use everything we've learned so far in differentiation. So you can see in the previous video, we're going to need to know that knowledge because we've now got some variables that are not y and x. A lorry is driven between London and Newcastle. In a simple model, the cost of the journey, c, when the lorry is driven at a steady speed of v kilometers per hour is this thing that we've got here. Find, according to this model, the value of v that minimizes the cost of the journey. So if we want the cost of the journey to be as small as possible, what we're really imagining is that this thing here is going to be some kind of graph, and we want to find a point where it is minimum. So we want the minimum part of it to be when usually dy by dx to be equal to zero, but in this case, it's not going to be dy by dx. In this case, a minimum point is going to be when dc dv is going to be equal to zero. OK, it could be when dv by dc is equal to zero. If it was a graph like this, you could be finding a maximum or a minimum. So we're going to need to make sure in part B of the question that the one that we have found is indeed a minimum point. So let's write down what the strategy is going to be for this question. We are going to, first of all, find what dc by dv is. Then we're going to make dc by dv equal to zero. And then we are going to solve it to find out what v is equal to. And that will give you the value of v. And then we'll do an extra bit of strategy for part two in a second. So as usual, C isn't written in its correct form. It needs to be 1,500 V to the minus one plus, I'm going to write this as 2 elevenths V plus 60. So when I differentiate this to get DC by DV, I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to pull that power down so I get minus 1,500 V and I'm going to decrease it to minus two. The 2 elevenths V is just going to become 2 elevenths and that 60 is just going to disappear. That's the first part done. I'm now going to make this equal to zero. So I'm going to say that dc by dv is equal to zero. In other words, minus 1,500 v to the minus 2 plus 2 elevenths equals zero. So 2 elevenths equals 1,500. And I'm going to do this over v squared. So multiplying everything up here, I get 2 elevenths v squared equals 1,500. So I'm going to do my 1,500, I'm going to multiply it by 11, and then I'm going to divide it by 2, so that v squared is 8,250, meaning that v is the, whoops, is the square root of that answer. So v is 90.8, does it want it to anything? I'm just going to do it to one decimal place, 90.8, and v is kilometers per hour. So this is the speed that will minimize the cost of the journey. Then the second thing it wants us to do is to find the minimum cost of the journey. Well, if it wants cost, we need to find out what the cost is equal to. Well, look, we're pretty lucky here because they've already told us how to find the cost. You just use that formula with the value of V that we have just found. So I'm going to now say for part two of the question that the value of the cost is going to be 1,500 multiplied by 90.8 to the minus 1, I'm just using this formula here, plus 2 elevenths multiplied by 90.8, whoops, plus 60. Now, I'm actually going to try and use the version of my number that I've got in my calculator. So it's the square root of 8,250. I'm going to leave that so that this value here is the more accurate one that I've got stored in my calculator as 90.8295. So when I type this all in using my answer button, I'm going to say, whoops, I've now square rooted it twice. So it's the square root of 8,250. I'm going to do 1,500 multiplied by my answer to the power of minus 1, or I could have done divide by my answer, plus 2 elevenths of my answer, plus 60. And so that we get the cost is 93 pounds and three pence and I've obviously rounded that to two decimal places to get the top the cost for this thing that we've got here. So we've done this part and this part now and now it's saying prove by using the second derivative that the cost is minimized. 
at the speed found in A. Obviously, it could have been maximized, and we don't want to maximize the cost. We want to minimize the cost. So we're going to use the second derivative to check that. So the strategy is going to be is after we differentiate it to get this, if it is a minimum, we want the second derivative to be greater than zero when V is equal to 90.8. So we'll see what happens there. So I'm going to differentiate this. So we've got that dc by dv was minus 1,500 v to the minus 2 plus 2 elevenths. So when I differentiate this again, I would get d2c dv squared. Then I've got the minus times by the minus 2 times the 1,500. So I get positive 3,000 v to the minus 3. And that 2 elevenths is going to go when it differentiates. Now, when v is equal to 90.8, the second derivative is obviously going to be bigger than zero because you think about it, the second derivative is going to be 3000 multiplied by 90.8 to the minus three, which is obviously bigger than zero. Hence, as the second derivative is greater than zero, this is a minimum. And then we're going to just look at part C of the question, which says state one limitation of this model. So let's actually just see what the model is. So let's read the bit that's talking about the model here. It says, in a simple model, the cost of the journey when the lorry is driven at a steady speed per hour is this. So we need to pick out something from this that is not probably very good. It says here, when the lorry is driven at a steady speed. Well, if it's going from London to Newcastle, it's probably not going to be driving at a steady speed all the way along here. So one limitation of this model is that this model is for when it drives at a steady speed, which is unlikely. So let's have a look at the mark scheme and see that we got all of these bits correct. So we got 90.8 kilometers per hour. We got 93 pounds or our answers which round to answers which round to 93 pounds. We've got the second derivative and we just need to say that it's greater than zero. You didn't even need to necessarily find this value here. But you do need to have that sentence to say that. And I've said it would be impossible to drive at this speed over the whole journey, which is the same. This model is for when it drives at a steady speed, which is unlikely. OK, I'm going to do some other ones in a separate video, which require an extra step at the beginning to come up with the formula that I've got here.